I recently did a Google map search of self storage facilities near my apartment in Brooklyn. And I found that there are over six locations just in a 20 block radius of my apartment. But it's not just Brooklyn. Today, there are more self storage facilities than ever before. In fact, there are more self storage facilities in the United States than there are McDonald's. And as it turns out, self storage is a $38 billion industry. So why are Americans seemingly obsessed with self storage? In 1964, Russ Williams and stepson Bob Munn opened A1, you store it, you lock it, you carry the key in Odessa, Texas. I know it's a mouthful, but it does a good job of defining self storage. They provide the space and you do the rest. This was one of the first businesses to follow this model, but it was marketed to oil companies for storing supplies, not the average citizen. The potential of self storage for everyday individuals was revealed with the arrival of Giant's public storage and Sugar National Storage Centers in 1972. This was the beginning of the present day craze. Today, there are 50,000 facilities across the country accounting for about 2.3 billion square feet of space. Stretched out, that's enough to cover 1,364 football fields back to back. But how did we get to a point where the sheer amount of storage could fill the Hoover Dam 26 times? Well, it all happened pretty recently. The self storage industry has seen nearly an 8% annual growth rate since 2012. The industry's success can be attributed to a perfect storm of sorts. Let's start with the business model. Self storage is a relatively easy industry to invest in. It's not an industry that's dominated by huge brands like say, the tech industry. Industry ownership in self storage is fragmented. Only 18% of facilities are owned and operated by the six largest public companies. 9% are owned by the next 100 operators, and 73% of the industry is owned by small operators. That's your mom and pop shops. There's more opportunity for the average person to begin investing in their own self storage operation. Not to mention, the initial cost for starting a self storage company is relatively low compared to other ventures like the hospitality industry. First off, the success of each self storage facility relies less on location than other businesses. Prospective facility owners are happy to build in areas that are considered less desirable and therefore cheaper. They do not need to be placed directly on a main strip, nor does the business require a quiet or aesthetically pleasing environment. The units themselves are cheap to build. There's not much plumbing, insulation, or windows. Just plain metal buildings or rows of metal containers and a central hub for a manager and an office. In a similar vein, the facilities don't require much maintenance. Customers come in, rent a space for about $50 to $100, and they fill it up with their stuff. You know, the operating expenses are fairly stable and fairly low, about 35% of your uh, collected income. And if rent isn't paid, Incomes in American pastime and personal favorite television indulgence, storage wars. No rent and the unit gets auctioned off. Another money-making venture for the company. But I'm not done pissing everybody off. I might just have to buy them all today. Self-storage units are low cost to build, require little maintenance, and yield high profits. But for this business model to be so successful, there needs to be a demand. And the demand we see today is a result of major shifts in how we live. Let's take a look at the housing market. Americans have been continually relocating from the Midwest and the Northeast, often heading to Sunbelt cities. In fact, nine of the 10 counties seeing the largest number of population growth are all in Sunbelt states. Most of these relocators are empty nesters looking to downsize in a warmer climate. But when they move, they need a place to store all of their memories. The idea of you're moving, so you rent something, you put it in a storage, and you use it temporarily. But the average storage time is increasing now from, you know, it used to be 15 to 18 months, now it's like 18 to 24 months. So I've seen some that have average length of stay is like five years. The contracts are all month to month, it's not leases. But it's not just boomers who are buying in on self-storage. Millennials are much more likely to live in urban areas than previous generations. A 2019 study from the Journal of Regional Science found that young people aged 25 to 34 preferred living in urban areas than generations prior. And this downsize on space carves out a specific niche for the self-storage industry. But there's something else that makes self-storage so resilient, and that's their ability to thrive in a down economy. Self-storage real estate investment trusts, also known as REITs, were the only form of real estate asset that produced a positive return during the Great Recession. 
They were also one of the least foreclosed upon real estate sectors during that time. The data shows that it's been very recession resistant. And I think in past years, if you look at, you know, a 25 year timeline and you see how, you know, it's not have, it doesn't have the huge peaks and valleys that other sectors tend to have. And that's what's made it really attractive. I mean, it's not very exciting, it's self storage. However, these REITs ended up buying out many of the mom and pop owned self storage companies. So, while the industry is still mainly owned and operated by self-made companies, the recession gave an opportunity for those larger companies to eat up their competition. Some trends are suggesting that an overbuilt industry may lead to oversaturation in some markets. For example, in Sarasota County in Florida, vacancy rates increased from 2015 to 2017, with the market stabilizing in 2019. But today, a down economy is the result of the coronavirus pandemic, and it presents more opportunities for the self-storage industry. The same effects that have come during a recession have come during the pandemic. That includes downsizing, divorce, death, you name it. For example, in March, college students found themselves sent home from schools and universities. This gave self-storage companies an influx of business as college students began to need places to stash their stuff with short notice. With over 16 million people unemployed as of July, delinquency rates rose in the self-storage industry. We're seeing, you know, essentially historically low interest rates and the cash flow has not changed dynamically due to the pandemic. So I think the outlook is, uh, you know, steady as she goes for, for self-storage in the years ahead. And I think some folks look at it as kind of a safe haven because of its uh, steadiness. So we're seeing increased capital flows to the sector. So I think we're looking at it as relatively, uh, a relatively positive outlook, but we also acknowledge there's still a lot of unknowns, the length of the pandemic and so forth. So it seems that even in the midst of a global pandemic, we can count on one constant. Self-storage places will continue to exist pretty much everywhere. And as people move and households consolidate, just like death and taxes, people will always need a place to store their stuff. How many self-storage facilities are around you? And do you use self-storage? Sound off in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.